<clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Hold on, I'm having a little issue right now. Give me one second, I'll be with you in a moment. Okay. Okay, let me put my camera. Did it rain in your house today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes. It rained in my house. It rained only four minutes. Yes. And it's hot. It's very hot right now. Only four minute rain. That's sad. Yeah, man. Here, uh, just like a few minutes ago, it stopped. But yeah, it, it rained like 30 minutes. Like 30 minutes. Well, that's good. Yeah. All right, how was your day today? Anything different? Anything new? Nope. Nothing new happened? Well, actually, I, I, I there is something that I would like to share with you. Sure, go ahead. Tell me. Uh, um, I, today, I just purchased one device, which is a, a, a scanner mm -hmm. for cars, and it just cost $11. So okay. I, I mentioned to you that, that I used to have some issue with my car, right? And yes. I, just called, I just called someone and he put the scanner in the car and we realized that there, there was a part that wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So I was checking on Facebook and I found this device that only cost $11. When I called the mechanic the last time, he, I had to pay $10 just to check with the scanner. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, he had a scanner that cost like $500. So I don't know why those devices are too expensive, but I just found one in Facebook in Marketplace and I started watching some videos and recommendation, and what the people think about it, opinions and stuff like that. And, and, I, and I said, well, $11, I'm gonna try. And I put the scanner in my car and actually, there, there is one code for one sensor that I have to purchase. But yeah, it works fine. And it only costs $11. It's very small and it connects with, with your smartphone. You you got to download an application and yeah. it is going to show you. So it's very good. I think that is, for me, it's going to be very useful, you know. Maybe you are you are on a trip and there is a, there is a code or the check engine uh, turn on. Mm -hmm. And you can you can do it by yourself, right? I like mechanic. I don't know that much, but I think this device is very interesting. So it's not that mo that too much expensive. So I'm I'm happy actually. I like one hour ago I was still checking that with my car. Oh, very okay. nice. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's those wireless scanners that you're talking about, correct? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Those I are, didn't know about that. Those are good. The only thing, the only thing I do recommend, like they're good if if the um if the issue that you're having is very basic. 
maybe that's the that's the difference with mm -hmm. the with those that are very expensive the professional one the the thing is that the professional ones i think they have to pay um a license a year <laughs> so then they can um they can check the complete car it checks everything of the computer oh that's the difference but i mean it's good though. I mean, if 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 your if your problem is basic, then the scanner, a cheap scanner, will detect it. But if it's something more serious, then yes, you do need a. a... But the problem Got is, you, but how do you know if your problem is serious or basic? Because imagine it's basic, and then the mechanic comes and he charges you like a big, like it was a big um. Like it was a big issue, so yeah, it's with that's it's, true. Mm -hmm. But it's always good to have that, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that is very useful for me. Yeah, I have a scanner too that it reads. It's a little. It cost me like a hundred and fifty dollars, but it reads. It scans and it reads. It does a lot of things. So. Nice. But you know, but it doesn't, but I don't recommend you to buy a, an expensive scanner. Because if you buy an expensive scanner, you still have to pay a license to receive that info. So got it. So mm -hmm. so uh, those those have to pay a license, like one payment mm -hmm. per year. So it's not a permanent license. No, it's not. God. Yeah, usually like when it's something like let me give you an example. My um my brother in law, he has a Kia, a Kia Soul. And we had a basic scanner, it's basic scan, and they couldn't find a problem. So we had to call a professional electricist and electrician, I'm sorry, and he brought a, a professional scanner and he sent all the info, I don't know to who to the company that sells you the service. And then they return him all the info and how to fix it and everything. <laughs> oh, so that's, that's the of, thing. Yeah, so I think that's kind of cool though. Cool. Oh, and of course the mechanic didn't give me that information. I just, that that's his machete. Yeah. But I think if you, if you are a mechanic, you should have one a professional one and pay that. That's something that I was wondering. Why do they purchase the 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 more expensive? Uh, I mean, what is the difference? I was wondering what is the difference. I didn't know until now that you are mentioned that is the the way that they detect the problems or mm -hmm. yeah, that if the problem is is uh, deeper. For example, I had Not a friend. A I had a friend that he the issue was in the in the key where he puts the key. They had a code, and a normal scanner wouldn't tell you because the scanner only reads the computer. You know, oh, this problem mm -hmm. a P zero forty two a P something P something, just the basic. But they could, and his car was a BMW, I think. Oh. Yeah, it was an expensive car. So when they put the scanner, oh, hold on, Rodrigo Melendez, hi. Rodrigo Melendez, are you there? He just connected, so he has to be listening to me. <laughs> Rodrigo, are you there? I don't know who Rodrigo is. I really don't know. Rodrigo, hola. Me escucha. Do you remember him? Do you remember Rodrigo in our last class, Dennis? No. Yeah, I, mean, I, I had him the complete month in the last class, and I have never spoken with him. So I... Uh, I, I don't know if this is the right class where he is. Rodrigo Melendez, Rodrigo Melendez, Rodrigo Melendez, Rodrigo Melendez. Hello, hello. 
chat. Okay, maybe you can't speak. Maybe you don't have a microphone. Can you chat? Can you send me a chat? I just want to know if you're there. Okay. Oh, uh, hey, my portal is not opening. Is is your portal opening? Yes, it is. Okay. I can't open it. So welcome, class. Welcome. Hello, Rosa Maria de Milagro Perez de... And you have a long Pass. name, too. The Paz. <laughs> Hi. Good evening. Hello. Hello. How are you? Um, I'm fine, but in my case, a little bit tired because I have been working. Where do you work? It's a little business of my father. My father, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. I work in a bakery. Oh, you make bread. Do you do you know how to make bread? Yeah. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. So, hey, that's good, though. You help your parents. It's a family business. Yes, but in the bakery, only work um, my sister and me, and sometimes my father. It's actually my because sister and I. My sister and I. Yes. Do you know why? Do you know why it's my sister and I and not my sister and me? I know that Jose, Saez, Denis, Sulma, my ex class, I know that you know the difference between I and me. But let me see my new the, my new people. Do you know why it's only my sister and me or my sister and I work in the bakery? Who can tell me why it's my sister and I? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, first of all, we have to understand what is the difference between I and me. Jose Wilfredo, do you know the difference between I and me? You're in mute. Um, I and me, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I don't remember. Okay, no problem. Who knows the difference? I and me. Ana Claudia, do you know the difference between I and me? I don't remember exactly, but uh, what I know is I is the subject, and we're talking about I person. Think, yeah. I think I told you that on Monday, remember? The, the, I, when, when I was explaining KISS? I remember. <laughs> David, I think David remembers. David, someone, do you remember the difference between I and me? You know, teacher, but I, I, I think that, uh, like said, uh, Anna Claudia is, uh, I is, uh, is a pronoun, but, but it's at, at the beginning of the sentence, and, and uh, me is at the end. Of it. it's, it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't this know. Is, this is a good practice for you. Imagine, yes, imagine, yes. imagine you have a little son or a little daughter, a little brother or a friend, and they ask you, Papa. In, in la escuela me preguntaron qué es la diferencia de I y me. What is the difference? Can you explain the difference sure. I and me to a baby, to, to a little child? Yes. Uh, I use performance the action and me when I recite the action. Exactly, yes. Uh, Remember, I yeah, told you, Monday. Yeah, it's active and passive. 
You are talking about that in the past. Yes, yes, I remember. Remember, I told you Monday, I is when I do something and me is when I receive something. Yeah. Yes. Passive voice. <laughs> Sorry, yes. we were talking about the passive and the active. Yeah. <laughs> so in this case, Rosa Maria del Milagro Perez de Paz, you and your sister are working. So you and your sister are doing the action. So in this case, it's, yes, my sister and I work in the bakery. Now, when is my sister and me? When you receive the action. For example, in the future, my father will give the bakery to my sister and me. Do you understand, Rosa Maria? Yeah, the last part, no. Okay, no problem. Listen, so the difference between I and me is I is when you do something. You are doing the action. I is you do the action. Me is when you receive the action. Okay, so let me give you an example. If I say, I am going to call my mother... Who's going to do the action in that sentence, Rosa Maria? Uh, can you repeat? I am going to call my mother. Who is going to do the action? I call? Listen, please. Okay. Listen. Remember, and this is, you have to have active listening if you're going to take the TOEFL exam. Because remember, Monday, Tuesday, it was about listening. <laughs> So you have to listen. Okay, listen, Rosa. I'm sorry, Rosa Maria. Today's your first day, correct? Yes. Yeah, that's what, yeah. It's the first time I see you. Okay, so listen here. Uh, Monday and Tuesday we have been practicing about the TOEFL test, and uh, Monday and Tuesday have been that you have to really listen to the question. Okay. Now, my question, if you if you analyze, my question is very simple. The questions you will see in, to, in the exam in TOEFL, they're very technical. So one more time, listen. I am going to call my mother. Who is going to do the action? Me. I. Okay, okay, I'm going to. Okay, one more time, Rosa Maria. Imagine this is an exam. Imagine this is a TOEFL question. Okay. This is the sentence. We have two people. We have I and we have my mother. I am going to call my mother. Who is going to do the action? I. Very good. Who is going to receive the action? My mom. Excellent. So uh, I, okay, I, now, I understand you. Okay, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I know you understand. Okay, now let me switch the sentence. My mother is going to call me. Who's going to do the action? My mom, yeah. Who's going yeah. to receive the action? Me. Okay, there you go. Very good. So you see the difference between I and me? We yes. say I when I do the action. We say me when I receive the action. Okay. And this, even nativos get this confused because even nativos said, what did you do on the weekend? Oh, you know, my wife and me went to the beach. You will hear people say that, but grammatically it's not correct because you have two people that did the action, my wife and I. So in this case, Rosa Maria, you said my wife, I'm sorry, my sister and I work in the work in the in the bakery. Bakery, yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it was just it was just a grammar. It was just a grammar. Okay. All right, so so anyway, so you're tired because you were working in, in the bakery, correct? Yes. All right. Hey, what happened to to my ghost student? He disappeared. Oh wait.
Yeah, you know, on Tuesday, I think I called Inglés Corporativo and I told him, hey, look, I need information on this student <laughs> because I have never spoken with him. I, I have never heard him speak or chat. So I need to know if he's really in class or if he's hacking us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't know. I mean, you... and don't you have? Uh, is I, I thought that as a teacher, you have all our information. For example, that you're able to see that I work in this and this place. No, I don't. I don't. I just uh -huh. received the list, the, the the WhatsApp list. Ah, uh, okay. I don't. Yeah. So it's not okay because if if you know if this person doesn't want to participate, it's, it's fine. Okay. But, but I me. remember, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I remember mm -hmm. we had some other uh, teachers mm -hmm. uh, that the similar situation happened with other students, but the next course, they weren't there because they didn't pass if they don't participate. In of the... course, of course. Yeah, there's many reasons. That's why I really want to know about the people that don't participate or people who, because I don't know if. Maybe they're using a different name or somebody else's, um, um, access. you know, yeah, um, you know, something, but I need to know. And if, if it's like that, it's fine, but tell me, mm -hmm. but don't be a mystery because really, that's, I mean, that makes up your mind. <laughs> that makes up your mind. <laughs> yes, imagine we're being hacked. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jose Wilfredo, we, you would have to be our WFM or <laughs> you will have access to everybody. <laughs> okay, so let me open the page. So remember yesterday, what did we do yesterday? We did reading, correct? Yes, and sir. um, we did a factual questions affirmative and negative right but remember the most important thing is that these questions are a little tricky yes the questions in the TOEFL will be a little tricky so that like once again remember this is a preparation for the TOEFL let me share the screen Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, we do. Yes. Yes, we do. Cool. This is what we did yesterday, remember? The negative factual questions and the Do you know what tip is? It's something like a clue. Like a what? A like a hint. Like a clue. A clue, a key. A clue, a hint, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's very common to say, hey, let me give you a tip. It's it's also like advice, too. But also it's the same word to, to give money to someone who... Also is the same. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Or punta. <laughs> like the tip of my tongue. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. There's an expression, oh my God, I forgot the name and it's in the tip of my tongue. Mm -hmm. So, but when you say, hey, let me give you a tip. Okay. Hey, tomorrow I have uh, an interview in a call center. Do you have any tips for me? Yes, let me give you a tip. Listen to the question. <laughs> Listen to the question and answer complete. Okay, so let's do the next part. Now we're going to do inference and rhetorical purpose questions. Inference and rhetorical purpose questions. Class, let me let me be honest with you. Personally, I don't like TOEFL. As a teacher, I don't like TOEFL. Do you know why? Because I think it's 
too complicated for something that is very easy. Um, what am I trying to say is that don't get scared because TOEFL is extremely technical. And in, at the end, the explanation is very easy. Like, um, this is TOEFL. Okay, what today we're going to study I and me. I is a subject pronoun. That means a subject pronoun is when a person, a place, or a thing is doing the action, which is a verb that will be received by an object. And an object pronoun is the person, place, or thing that will receive the action of the verb that has been done by the subject. You know, it's like, uh, what? <laughs> and the conclusion is, I do the action and me, I receive the action. Simple. Mm -hmm. So, so that when I say that I don't like TOEFL, I think, I think it's very complicated. I think, I think they complicate it too much to explain something, but that's, that's in the complete world. It's not only in El Salvador, it's, it's TOEFL. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that sometimes people se dan por vencido, tiran la toalla, like, no, oh, it's too complicated. No, just pay attention. And the reason why I'm saying, imagine this, the inference and rhetorical purpose of a question sample. If I read that on an exam, I get a, what? <laughs> what the? Even me as a teacher, I have taken the TOEFL, I think, three times. And it's still complicated for me. Yes, but so... Remember, but the most important thing is that you have to speak. <laughs> so um, so you have to understand that TOEFL will be very technical, okay? So, but if you don't understand something, don't don't give up. Don't don't get scared, like, oh my god, this is too complicated. Yeah, it is complicated. I think it's sophisticated. The TOEFL. Okay. So let me put oh, let me share sound. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you about TOEFL? Yes, teacher. Hmm. That's why I really, I like- Don't get anxious and don't get nervous. Yeah, don't get nervous. I mean, expect the question to be, well, you know, I think I had that. I had that problem when I was a little kid that when somebody asked me a very complicated question, I, I blank because I heard the, the question too complicated and maybe I knew the answer. But just listening to the question, I said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, that's what, you know, I, you know what I do like? I like TOEIC. Have you heard of TOEIC? Yeah. Yes. That one I like. TOEIC is cool. Sure. Remember, I, I told my ex class about TOEIC. But it does, that is focus on business purpose? No. Yes and no. Yes and no. TOEIC is, let me give an example in Spanish. Mm -hmm. People from Colombia, Puerto Rico, the Caribbean, and Colombia, and Argentinian people. Son bien mal educados para hablar. Because they speak differently. Like, for example, Argentinian people say, uh, pollo, pollo. And really, show is an Argentinian thing. It's pollo. I'm sorry, but it's pollo. <laughs> no, it's pollo. No, it's not. It's pollo. <laughs> that you consider is pollo is your business. So what I'm saying is that so because they expect you to understand what they're saying. Like uh I remember I told you I was an interpreter. 
when I had Puerto Rican people, oh my God, that was so difficult. Because I remember, <laughs> I La remember, guagua. no, yeah, and I would say, <laughs> um, buen día, yo me llamo David Baltrons, voy a ser su intérprete el día de hoy, por favor le pido que me hablen frases cortas. Y, you know, and then I tell the interpreter, you know, I am, oh, so I said, okay, me podría dar su ubicación. Estoy en la helado, en la cuarta. <laughs> bueno, por empezar, soy de Puerto Rico. In, and, you know, and I know that they're saying Puerto Rico, but, you know, because it's everything is legal, I have to say, usted es de Puerto Rico. Es P de Pedro U de, <laughs> y tendría que decir R de Roberto L. Okay, L de Lalo o R de Roberto. L de, Ro you know, and I'm so, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, and it had to be. So what I'm saying is, Toik is similar because in English, in America, we say bathroom. And the European people, they say, ah, <laughs> bathroom you don't take a bath in the bathroom because if we go to a burger king people say where's the bathroom and a bathroom lo dice la palabra bath room mm -hmm. so we in america we say it wrong pero vienen um vienen los europeans and they say water closet so the american people say what water closet what hmm. the hell is a water closet so what is the correct word? Restroom. It's a stoic. <laughs> it's called test of international speaking. So, stoic. Test of international communication in English. So, it's, 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 um, I have not in neutro. Like one time I was teaching Spanish and a student asked me, Un gringo. How come some people say vos y some people say tú? That's a very difficult question to answer. So I tell them, don't say vos, don't say tú, say usted. Why? Because everywhere in the world that speaks Spanish, they will understand usted. And after you will understand, it's a cultural thing, you will understand when to say vos or tú. But right now, say usted. That's similar how Toik is. They te uh, it teaches you how to speak like the formal English, you know. Desearía que hubiera un Toik para español. Debe de haber, ojalá. El Salvador tenemos muy buen, muy buen, ¿cómo se llama? En Centroamérica tenemos buen, buen manejo del idioma. Yeah, Mexico too. Lexico, no, Lexico. Lexico, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, Lexico, we do. Yeah, but I think I think the the most difficult ones were um, Puerto Rican, Dominic. I mean, Caribbeans and Argentinians. Yeah, like it's yeah, la guagua y todo eso. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or uh, Colombians mezclan. Pues fíjate que eh, yo estaba con un man que que me trató un poco mal, entonces cuando me, yo estaba con un man, ok, cuando se refiere a man es una pareja de sexo masculino, <laughs> because I had to, I had to interpret that in English, <laughs> you know, so, so when I got somebody from El Salvador or Mexico, I said, oh yes, thank you, because it, it wasn't, it wasn't very complicated. And the Dominicans, they speak very fast. Oh, no, 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 Okay, let's listen to this video. Let's get ready now to study the other types of questions you may. I, I believe that you need to increase the velocity. <laughs> My you God, need to increase the, the speed. 
Yep, that one. I was That's about a, to tell you, is she stoned? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's get ready now to study the there you go. Okay. other types of questions you may encounter on the TOEFL test. Inference and rhetorical purpose questions. Inference questions ask you to identify information or comprehend an idea that is not plainly stated in the reading passage. You can recognize inference questions because they usually include the words imply, infer, or suggest. So my comment about Argentinian people or Puerto Rican people, I never said, I never said, you can say, so are you implying that are all Argentinians are bad speakers? I didn't say that, but maybe I see why you asked me that, because maybe I gave that idea. Do you understand? So this is what an inference question means. Remember, I spoke good about Central American people, the lexical of, lexics of Central American people. So if somebody got offended, they can tell me, so... Are you suggesting that we should all speak like Salvadorans? You know, so it's actually to start a, an argument. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, but, but I see your reason why you ask me that. Because maybe my comment or the reading was... Maybe I I I didn't mean to offend, and I did. Do you understand? So it's it's like in a reading. Okay. So do you understand what an inference question is? Once again, let's listen. Watch. Let's... Stated in the reading. So you identify information or comprehend an idea that is not plainly stated in the reading passage. Now, it, it, quitemos reading passage. Let's let's say my comments. So I didn't state that you know El Lexico Central Americano is the best. But if you want to start an argument, you say, Oh, so are you implying that only Salvadorians passage, speak well? You can recognize inference questions because they usually include the words imply, infer or suggest. Rhetorical purpose questions. Rhetorical purpose questions are similar because they also ask for information not plainly stated. This will ask why the author has presented a particular piece of information. As a tip, if you can't identify the correct answer immediately, one suggested way to approach these types of questions is to eliminate wrong answers. Let's have a look at a question. What can be inferred from the passage? Let's take a look at all the choices. Let's go over each option. Option A. Let's do the reading real quick. I'm going to read it and, and okay, it says, the Mississippi River. Hey, uh, I have a challenge for you. Adelina, can you spell Mississippi? Okay, I will try. M A S S A S S A P P A. Massa. Sorry. Yeah. Massa Sapa. <laughs> no. Change the A for I. M I S S I S S I P P I. Hmm. Okay, now. Can you spell Mississippi with one I only? Okay, and, it ha and it has to sound Mississippi. Just with one eye. Yes. Uh, it will be M I S double S double S 
double T I. Two eyes. <laughs> it's difficult. Who can spell Mississippi with one eye? It's possible. I, I promise I, you, it's, it's possible. It's, 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 but that sounds miss. But with only one eye? Mm -hmm. Or the last eye? Only one eye. One eye? And, I? It, and, and it has to sound Mississippi. Uh, my speed. <laughs> my speed. Okay. Do you give up? Oh, okay. Listen, I'm going to spell Mississippi with one eye. Look at me. M-S-S-P-I. <laughs> no, it's like this. Look at me. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 oh, my God. <laughs> this <is> one eye. <laughs> Come. <laughs> that was a gringo joke. <laughs> yes, it was. A, it was such a clean joke. My God. Come Hey, but it, it's true. One eye. Yeah, that wasn't. <laughs> so that's a good joke for the office tomorrow. Hey, can you spell Mississippi with one eye? <laughs> Everybody breaking <laughs> their brain. <laughs> I David, did you understand the joke? I am thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, no. No, I guess he, he doesn't see you. Maybe he, he didn't see you on, on okay. the screen. Can you see me, David? Uh, yes, but... Uh... Okay, look, I'm going to spell Mississippi with one eye. Look. But look at him. M-I-S-S-I. -S 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 <laughs> yes, I was reading. Okay. <laughs> yes, I got it. All right, cool. Okay, so the Mississippi River and its tributaries from the world's fourth lar uh, longest river system. Canadian province and all parts of 31 states, I'm sorry, of oh, 31 states in the United States have rivers that drain into the Mississippi. As the Mississippi River flows down to join the sea, it deposits sand, silt, and clay, building the delta seaward across Louisiana's shallow continental shelf. The Delta Marsh and its base, lakes, and sounds provide shelter and nutrients for North America's most fertile marine nursery. I know there's a lot of new words for you there. You're like, what? Let's hear. The rivers from two Canadian provinces drain into the Mississippi River. Drainage areas in Canada are not mentioned. Option B. 31 states out of all the states in the United States have rivers. I'm sorry. The no, passage. I'm going to rewind again so we can start. So after the reading, it says, if you don't understand which is the um, inference question, it says here, eliminate the wrong answers. Immediately, one suggested way to approach these types of questions. So remember, the question will come because implying or suggesting, but if you don't know what to ask, so eliminate the wrong answers. Is to eliminate wrong answers. Let's have a look at a question. What can be inferred from the passage? Let's take a look at all the choices. Let's go over each option. Option A. The rivers from two Canadian provinces drain into the Mississippi River. Drainage areas in Canada are not mentioned. Option B. 31 states out of all the states in the United States have rivers that drain into the Mississippi. Option C. If only parts of some states have rivers that drain into the Mississippi, there are probably other rivers in other parts of those states that drain elsewhere. Option D. 
If the Mississippi extends to Canada and flows down to the sea carrying sand, silt, and clay, probably some of the silt the river is carrying comes from Canada. So letter D is our final answer. Just by saying probably, because, it, because it's a conclusion. It's a um, uh, deduction. Let me see here. Okay, we're going to practice negative factual information questions. It says, negative factual information questions. Read each passage, choose the letter of the word, a phrase that best completes the sentence that follows it. So... Who wants to help me read? Sulma, can you please read? I haven't heard Sulma speak today. Okay. We are at the scene of colonial North America was one of complex cultural negotiation and explosive interaction among Native Americans. Africans and Europeans. History books have portrayed the settlement or North America as a uni unilateral push of Europe into a virgin land. Also, primary documentary government report, travel account, trade journal. All writing from European is perspective. Perspective is, perspective is filed with observation mm -hmm. concerning Native American custom and belief. History books are more interesting interest in only important bill be paid dealers. Battles. Uh, battles. And the uh, it no what do you say? Uh, it not historians. Mm -hmm. The scholars who blend anthropology is is things with historical research to produce a cultural understanding of the past have been making advance in understanding the Native American perspective of European colonization. Okay, good. So, listen, I'm going to read it now. It says, whereas the scene of colonial North America was one of complex cultural negotiations and explosive interactions among Native Americans, Africans, and Europeans, history books have portrayed the settlement of North America as an unilateral push of Europeans into a virgin land. Although primary documentation, government reports, travel accounts, trade journals, all written from a, uni um, a European perspective, is filled with observations concerning Native American customs and beliefs. History books are more intense, I'm sorry, interested in outlining important battles. Outlining, I'm sorry. Ethno historians, the scholar, the scholars who blend anthropology insights with historical research to produce cultural understanding of the past have been making advances in understanding the Native American perspective on European colonization. So,
Remember, negative factual information questions. Just a curiosity, do you remember what a negative factual uh, question is? There are three uh, options that are true and only one that is false. Well, that's that would be in the exam, but do you remember what it, the, what the negative factual information question is? There are something that is not in the in the passage in the text, mm -hmm. or or something that contradicts. The... Okay, exactly. So it says the, the author mentions all of the following as sources of primary documentation, except there's the except what. Government yeah, reports? Hey, yes, government reports. Travel accounts, trade yes, journal, history books. History books. There are no government reports. This is the first one. Okay. Government reports. Okay, and remember what is the tip? The tip that the, the video told you? If you don't know? The, 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 directly contradicts information. Exactly. So if you say, hmm, they all seem to, yeah, government reports. I think it's letter D, history books. History books? Okay, let's see. Yes. The author mentions all of the following as sources, as sources, listen, that's a key word, of primary documentation except, okay? So... One more time, it says, whereas the scene of North America was one complex cultural negotiations and explosive interaction among Native Americans, Africans, European, history books have portrayed the settlement of North America as a unilateral push of Europeans into a virgin land. So history books, that's that key, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's there. Yep. History book. But... It's there. But... Yeah. Is this a primary doc, uh, so is a source? No. That is a primary documentation. Okay. Isn't in paragraph it says yes, yeah, but it, the, the, the question is except, except. it's not mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. This is what I'm saying. It's tricky. Huh? Mm -hmm. So although primary oh it's that it's that up and out primary mm -hmm. documentation government reports, travel accounts. So we have government reports. Mm -hmm. Travel accounts. Travel accounts, and trade, trade journals, journals, all written from a European perspective is filled with observations concerning Native American customs, blah, 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 blah. So we have A and history books. What do you think is the right one? We have something different? History books. Okay, let's have history books. Let me see, David. Maybe I I, I felt David very confident, very confident in his answer. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Oh man, we have a lot of readings. Although, although Winslow Homer. 1836 to 1910 is best known for his realistic watercolors of powerful dramatic seascapes. He first won acclaim in the art world as an illustrator for the reportage of an American of the American Civil War. This led to his illustrating text of purpose and poetry, prose and poetry, sorry. His more than 160 drawings reached print and lithographs, wood engravings, and photomechanical cuts. Despite the skills and the serious intent he invested in them, Homer's book illustration made little impact during his lifetime. Even today, most of his illustrations are not discussed in the literature converting his work and Nearly all of them have been excluded from even the most comprehensive exhibitions of Homer's art. So, the reading here, the author mentions all of the following as types of work Winslow Homer did, except what? 
photography. 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 Mm-hmm. It's actually photography. Mm. Yeah, I think this one was easier. Okay, next it says almost all sports and outdoor leisure activities carry real risks. That's what they already answered. Yes. Yeah, we did this one yesterday, remember? Yes, yes. we worked on this yesterday. What well, was it? Um, avalanches, right? No, it storms. was storms. Storms. It was storms. storms. Yes. yes. Why is it here again? I forget. <clears throat> okay, now perhaps. Okay, saben que vamos a hacer algo más fácil. The author mentions all of the following as a pearl try a uh, pearl divers underwater activity. Except, ah, that's another tip. Read the question first. <laughs> yes, the second tip. Mm -hmm. Read the question first, so now you know what to look for. Perhaps one of the most hazardous ways of making a living from the sea was diving for pearls. Only the most daring would risk their lives in this profession. You want to look that guy, the conchas, huh? Have you seen them? I saw a report in YouTube of the los concheros, creo que le dice. Man, they go like four or five minutes underwater to get conchas in, with their hands. It's, well, <clears throat> I'm sorry, let me start again. Perhaps, <laughs> no, it was very interesting. <laughs> Perhaps one of the most hazardous, hazard is dangerous. One of the most hazardous ways of making a living from the sea was diving for diving pearls. For pearls. Only the most daring would risk their lives in this profession. The technique of pearl diving was simple. Divers attached themselves to ropes that were used to keep to keep them in contact with an assistant on board of the ship. Attached to a different rope were large weights that held the speed of the driver of the diver. Descent and hence conserve their breath and searching the seabed. The seabed. Also, oh, uh, also yeah. needed were nose clips, heavy gloves, and provided protection for their hands against sharp edges of the oyster shells. So las conchas. And the net which they collected the oysters. Ostras on the oysters. So, these nets were slung around the diver's neck so as not to impede the movement of their hands. When the divers signaled... How old their... is that? I'm sorry? I was reading. Oh, no, okay, I'm sorry. When the drivers, when the divers signal their intention to surface, the assistant held them and their load of the oysters up. The oysters were then opened, and any pearl found were um, shifted through sieves and graded according to the size and quality. Once a widely practiced profession, pearl diving has largely disappeared with the development of the cultured pearl. So the author mentions all of the following as per, as pearl divers, underwater activities, except the opening of the oysters. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Really, this one's the one that, okay. And let's do the last one. Margaret, okay, let's read the question first. The author of the passage gives all the relevant dates about Mitchell except the date of, hmm. So now we know that we have to pay attention to dates and what date doesn't the author give. So Margaret Mitchell wrote only one novel, Gone with the Wind. I love that movie. 
It was published in 1936 and proved to be such a huge success that Mitchell's life was irrevocably altered. She lost all her privacy and lamented this fact constantly until her death in 1949. The novel, which has been translated into 28 languages and has sold more copies than any other book except for the Bible, won the Pulitzer Prize in 1937. Two years later, the movie produced by David O. Selznick had its premiere in Atlanta. This movie holds the record of having been viewed most time than any other movie produced through her life. Mitchell denied that her main characters, Scarlett and Red, or any other characters, were biographically in any way. She did have access to family correspondence dating from the 1850s to the 1880s, the time of the American Civil War. It seems natural that a woman with Margaret Mitchell's vivid imagination and historical awareness and its possession of a collection of family correspondence that documents such volatile era is that of a civil war could weave a story that still enthralls. So the author mentioned everything except the dates of? The first period of the novel. The last one. The first printed? Yeah. Hey, that one was easy. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, I think it's, it's the, the day of her birth. I think it does mention it was published in 1936. It was published, but not the first printing. So oh, this is tricky. What what do you think, Adelina? I think uh, the correct answer is uh, letter B, her birth, the date of her birth, because it, it doesn't mention there. No, it does. I think. Uh, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, it doesn't. She, it only says when she died. Huh? Mm -hmm. Her birth. Yeah, her birth. Good, good reading. Good point. Let me see. All right, yes, it was her birth, the opening oysters, the storms, and I'm going to have it, David, if you were right, photography, history books. All right, so number one was history books. Yep. Number two, photography. Number three, the storms. Number four was the opening of the oysters and number five, her birth. 